need to unmute and I need to start our video. Will they be able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, this is. Um, um, to unmute and I need to start our video. Will they be able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, this is um, um, Karen, when you're ready. Let's see, it is. So it is what time. 104. 104. Won't my watch give me the time? <laughs> okay. Call to order at 104. Um, Pledge of Allegiance. There's a card. Oh, my blind is over here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Um, and now I'd like to take a vote to reorder to unmute agenda and because Mark has started our video. Early. So Will they be able to hear to new business next. And then we'll go into public participation, You're making me wait longer, Dave. You're making me wait longer now. Um, then public participation staff report, old business. And we can do public participation again, or we can forget it. I don't think you're gonna wanna speak twice. We'll get rid of that. And then- Well, if anybody else joins in, we might need to. Okay. Okay. All right, so we'll keep it. All right, so the next, um, can I have a motion to change the order of the the agenda? No move. Okay. Um, we want to take a vote. Is everyone okay with that? All right. Okay. So, uh, new business. We'll go to. Why don't we determine the next meeting date and the agenda next? Well, Mark is still here if we have to vote on it. Um, so since our next meeting date is in only in like a week and a half or two weeks, so I thought maybe we could come up with a different date. And I know you're really busy at night, every night of the week. No. No, do you have some nights that you're not busy? I don't know. I don't have my calendar. No, I need to bring it. Ah. Okay. We're supposed to meet was it the first? Wednesday? The first Wednesday of the month. Our our typical meeting day is the first Wednesday of each month at six o'clock. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So is that a hardship for anybody that, that doesn't see well at night and drive when it gets dark? I haven't heard any feedback either way. I, I'm, I'll meet whenever the commission wishes to meet. I do have a couple of my own volunteer obligations um, that might make it difficult, but I could work around things. So we had talked about moving it to the afternoon, but then that's a problem for um, for some people if they work. But they could Zoom in. Um, since it's hybrid, and it would be an opportunity for senior citizens to come to our meeting, but I see nobody was interested. <laughs> Didn't have much interest today, but <laughs> maybe next time. Um, but this was kind of crazy, and we didn't advertise it. And uh, Well, it was posted accordingly, but normally we would have more notice out to the public. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you want to do this by email? Is that better for you, Jerry Lynn? Yeah, or text. Or text. Yeah, yeah. text. I get tons of email. I mean, you know, but I'm not the center of the universe. So as you know, we need to post meetings with the town clerk's office within 24 hours um, for special meetings. But if we could get more of a notice, I'd really like to start getting the word out for people to attend our meetings, members of the public, members of the center. So technically what we did today was correct, but it'd be nice to be able to to uh, do that, just but I'll do it again. I'll do whatever the commission wants in terms of meetings. I'll make it work. All right. So, do you have um, cell phone numbers for everybody? So we you could text, or is that not legal for the town to do? I would be leery of like a text group per se, because then it can kind of starts into becoming a meeting because a bunch of us are talking via text. 
but certainly uh, we could start via email. Um, I can make a, I can call you, Sterling, you know, Commissioner Nagel, if you wanted me to, um, rather than do it via email. That's fine too. As long as we're not we're not taking any kind of vote or action, but we do have to decide on a meeting day. It's pretty important. Is that okay with you? Sure. Everyone else. My my only uh, as long as you uh, before election day, uh, November eighth, I will be busy um, Wednesday nights. So um, if it's if you're meeting after November eighth, then I should be free in the evenings. Is there a um, Wednesday? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm working the polls. Okay. Uh, you want to shoot for November sixteenth? It's a Wednesday and it's after election and it's before Thanksgiving. And the, uh, Commissioner Lynch, I think you had your hand raised. Did you have a? Did you have something? Okay. I don't see. I'm looking. I don't have my phone, but ran out of the house with that. But that's probably. I can do it if it's six o'clock. I have an eight o'clock. Meeting with another group. Wednesday, November 16th mm -hmm. works well for me. I don't know if anyone else, if that works well with them. Yeah. Are we talking in the afternoon again or are we talking in the evening? Well, we have to decide as a group what we'd like to do. So, do you have um, feelings about the meetings, the times? Um, either way works for me. If I might, uh, I know our new member works for some of us. Mm -hmm. uh, that's work during the day. Okay. So more than likely, they would not be able to make it. So that, that is an issue. And I don't know about Kim Rada. Isn't she our other liaison? liaison? She does work as well. She, as a matter of fact, had a conversation about it. She was really said no. Okay, so maybe you can get something out about Wednesday, November 16th at six o'clock. And having it by Zoom opens up a lot. So I don't exactly, I'm in my 70s now, I don't exactly like driving at night either. So but it's not too, 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 too dark. At that hour. All right. So um, we don't need a vote on that. Uh, what about the agenda? Does this look okay? Do you want the same agenda? For the next meeting. For the, for the next meeting. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is there any anything you want added? Jamie? No? Okay. All right. So um, the next thing under new business is membership renewals. One second. Erin, did you want to make a motion to, I think that's so small. Did you want to um, reorder for commissioners to make comments before they have to go? Um, yes. Okay. Does anyone have any other comments under new business? Mark? Yes, hi. I like to see it's an idea that I that I shared with a, a chair on um, record to see um, if we could rouse interest among the uh, fellow uh, commissioners present here, as well as the general public and first the uh, uh, membership at large here at the Senior and Disabled Center. If we could do a presentation on um, invisible disabilities and um i did uh <clears throat> oftentimes uh, uh the, the idea behind it is um for those that uh, may not be familiar with that i think it's a topic where a lot of there's a lot of uh disabilities uh, are thought to be visible or physical tangible having a disability and i thought it would be if, if the if the commission uh, committee would agree with it. Maybe it would be a nice idea to, to have a presentation here at the center for uh, uninvisible disabilities and have an expert speaker 
common uh, talk about this topic, uh, which I think is uh, not only timely, but I think uh, could be very educational as well as informative for uh, the community at large. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Then if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please uh, let me know. I did uh, come up with an outline and I shared it with uh, Chairwoman Brecker and uh, also uh, with uh, Director uh, Jamie Trevithan and uh, Good at that. Thank you very much. Okay, and you happen to know someone who might be interested in speaking, you said? I know a few people, yes. Um, I, I, could, I could really get in touch with, with, with at least one person and uh, get back to uh, get back to you. Here, uh, one of the you know, you can coordinate something. Commissioner France, if I may, we have our program coordinator, Barbara Wilmer, here was excellent, um, partially here to just kind of meet the new commission, but also to, to talk. So if you don't mind, I'm going to share that outline with her. She has a, knows a lot of people, has a lot of resources. So if you know somebody, fantastic. But we're also happy to do some research on our end. I think it's an important um, topic that we should be discussing here. And, and we do a lot of health education for many different things. But I think this is an, um, something that we should absolutely bring up. So I appreciate you taking the time to put together this thorough um, outline and give us some good ideas. Just another thing we could reach into. We're always looking for more ideas. So I appreciate that. Thank you. It's a good idea. And a number of years ago, we had a, uh, it was at the town hall when there was a town with the other mm -hmm. one. And it was about uh, 40. Yes. And we had a person who came from the Institute of Living that was working on hoarding. That was, yes. and it's still, Runs rampant in Newington. I am involved with the the um, Newington Safe Homes Task Force, which does address issues of hoarding, and it's a huge issue. So that's another topic we could certainly bring back to the center. We did it a few years ago, but I'm happy to always do it anytime. Okay. Now, would this be just for the commission, or would you open it up as as a meeting that anybody would like to attend, or here at the center? You know, basically. You know, like any other activity, you just put it out there for anybody that would have wants to attend. Yeah, no, great question. So, yeah, the LD for anybody that uh, the general public is mm -hmm. would be uh, for the uh, members of the center and the, the public at large. Thank you. I like the idea as well. So. Mm -hmm. Should be either two times, one in the daytime and one in the evening. My opinion. Yes, that's a very yeah. good idea. As long as we have an instructor or speaker who is available, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I'm interested in doing more evening programs here and there as our time permits and our budget permits and everything else. Yeah, with um, with what's going on now, people killing themselves and and all that, um, it's probably mm -hmm. something good to, to talk about. Depression, yeah. right? These are all COVID diverse. brought about a lot of that yes. stuff, brought it out. And these so. are all things we address regularly here anyway, but certainly any type of suggestions for any programs are always welcome to hear. And there's a nice, a good network of experts out there who could help us put these things together in a way that will be beneficial. Okay, great. Um, so membership renewal. So, yeah, I guess. All right, so now we're back to let me just make sure we're still correct. under new business. Okay. So um nope. Okay. So membership renewals. Um as you know, we our membership year started July 1st. Um we sent out our letters letters for renewal. At the time, we didn't have an active commission or a quorum for an active commission. So with the town manager and finance director's um, blessing, we waived, oops, somebody has to wave their arms around to turn it back on. We waived um, membership fees in lieu of donations. <laughs> so I did run, a, we have approximately 1,200 active members now, which is on par with pre-pandemic um, levels, um, slightly under. Our goal in the next for the remainder of this fiscal year would be to increase that membership. I would like to increase it 25% in the next year. And that's pretty, um, it's a pretty big goal, but we're planning on doing a lot of outreach to people who may be underserved now 
a couple groups, people who may be underserved now, people who don't know we exist, and people who are aging in to our older adult population, the folks who are in their mid-50s to mid-60s, who are probably still working if they indeed work full-time, um, but might be interested in joining and how do we reach all of those populations is something that our staff talks about quite a bit, particularly we have a staff meeting right after this meeting and it's something we're gonna discuss. So we do plan to grow our membership. As Diane Stone always said, you can't serve all 11,000. You can't have all 11,000 older adults come in here because we don't have room, but there's always room for growth in my opinion. So we're going to continue with that growth. Um, thought I had it. We have received um, about $8,500 in renewal donations so far since July 1st. We did a push in September um, to people who had previously been members who hadn't returned to please return. And we got, I think about another 90 or hundred people who replied to that, which is pretty decent because usually we do that and nobody replies. So membership growth is going to be our focus in the coming months. Um, so that's basically it for membership. Oh, and although our door counters aren't active and I need to figure out how to get them reacted, in September, checking into my senior center to the kiosks, over 21 days, we had 1,495 check-ins. So those are just, and of course, those are many of those are duplicated, you know, people coming in every day or whatever. But um, so that's that we had a lot of people in the building, a lot of people. Um, if you notice the hustle and bustle, even now, particularly in the morning. Um, so, and again, not everybody checks in despite our best efforts. We can never get 100% compliance of people scanning in. So I am optimistic with our membership numbers, with our donations, um, pretty much everything in that regard moving forward. So the 8,500. Mm-hmm. was what well again we waived membership fees right so that so was that what was people donations. gave instead yeah okay and the membership fees if you don't if you're unaware were were previously five dollars for the year for a resident ten dollars for the year for a non-resident and we are 95 percent residents so so that's pretty good yeah absolutely so people see value because they wouldn't give any money if correct. they didn't see value so correct. that's great yes thank you um, up can, upcoming activities. Sure. Um, I'm sorry. Go I ahead. Have one on. question, and Dora, what do you put when you're coming here? Did I scan my? Yeah, like commission on aging. It's not okay. Let me look at it. I'm it sorry. Was it's up yeah. there, but. Yeah, I did the same thing. I signed in and I went forward. I didn't do an admission meeting, and it's not there. Okay. You know what? I. <laughs> you know what? I think that might be my fault. I don't think I changed it today after it had been delayed a couple of times. I just, I was running around and I forgot. So I will make sure for the next one it's on there. Is that anything you can just permanently put there? Like, uh, If we had a regular meeting schedule, yes. If not, we have to program it oh, for each one. Okay. Yeah. It so used I, to be on there. Yeah. I think it was on the last page. Because it was a end. regular meeting schedule. Yeah. yeah. But with COVID, I'm sure it came off. It was... No, we had it programmed. And then, like I said, I forgot to move it today. Oh. So it wouldn't be on there today. It was on there whenever we were supposed to meet last. Okay. Um, so upcoming activities. Our program coordinator, Barbara Wilmer, is here. Um, if you, I'm going to turn here fully. I'm so afraid of this board. I'm going to turn this camera toward you. You're going to share a little bit about some upcoming activities for the fall. And then I have a couple of things a little longer term. So since you have the October newsletter with all the programs, I'm actually going to go over the November, which hasn't been published yet, although it will be soon. Um, and you can see the types of programs that we generally have. I do try to use the eight dimensions of wellness in the programming to make sure that we hit upon those, not all eight in a month, but to keep in mind that um, you know we want to hit them all for complete wellness. Uh, so coming up in November, we're going to have a Veterans Day ceremony, which the public is welcome to attend. And then we'll have a luncheon that is by invitation only for our veteran members, um, which is really nice for them. And it's been a few years since we've been able to do that. So it'd be nice to have it in person again. Uh, we have a strength and balance presentation coming up by a local uh, doctor of physical therapy. He will be presenting on the importance of strength. Uh, and decreasing the risk of balance or 
decreasing risk of falling. Oh, who is that? Increasing. His name is Dr. Soder Rova. He's fairly new. Okay. okay. We have a lunch and learn. Uh, we're talking about health education, uh, a doctor coming in from Trinity Health to talk about diabetes and heart disease, and that's sponsored by uh, the residents at Ferry Park. So they'll be providing a lunch, which they're including cookies and chips on a heart disease and diabetes, which as a wellness person makes me real, but that's okay. It's free lunch. So um, we do have a hip hop dance exercise size class coming in. This is a repeat event. Uh, we have some creative classes, card making and uh, creative uh, mixed media on canvas classes, origami, paint and sip. We had the last session of our WISE program, which is an intergenerational program with a class, a psych class over at CCSU where we go over there and sometimes the students come over here. So they'll be coming here. We also have an intergenerational pen pal program, which we did for the first time last year. It worked out really well. I matched a senior National Honor Society student from the high school with a senior member here. They wrote letters once a month back and forth for several months. And then we had a breakfast at the high school for them to meet. And it was just such an uplifting event and, and well received. So we're doing it again this year. And we actually have 20 pairs of pen pals that will be writing back and forth. Wow. We've got, yeah, it, it, it really turned out to be well received, like I said. Um, we have UConn pharmacy students coming. They've been here in the past to do presentations on pharmacy-related topics. This will be over-the-counter and prescription drug interactions specific to calcium supplements and um, cold and allergy medications. So those are the special programs that are coming. And then we have our regular programs that we have on a weekly and monthly basis as well. Our gift shop opened this month. Um, post pandemic, and that's been busy, and people are happy to go in there and and shop again and look around. And my understanding, since I wasn't here pre pandemic, is that it's busy in the fall because of the holidays. So mm -hmm. we'll look forward to um, people spending their money. Yeah, there was a nice article in the rear. Was it the rear reminder about the opening? Was there? Yeah. Did you put it in? I did not put it so in. So funny enough for no. the rare reminder, I think they get a hold of our connections. Up online and then they choose what they want to put in there which oh, it's good and bad because sometimes it's a program that's just for our members and people want to sign up but we encourage them to become members so they can go so it does Great. work but sometimes it gets a little hairy <laughs> that's about that's about it for programming any questions no i know you've been really busy <laughs> yeah, right, right I have been, but it's it's fun so i always am open to suggestions for programming in any area, and a lot of the programs that I've had in the last several months with suggestions from members, and they worked out very well. Yeah. And Barbara doesn't give herself enough credit. Um, in addition to being an excellent program coordinator, she also has taken on the role of running our entire nutrition program, so Congregate Lunch, Meals on Wheels, Coffee Shop. So she's very busy. We no longer have a part-time paid position doing that, so we absorbed it within staff. And uh, she's absorbed a good part of that. We have some of it, Terry does a little bit of it, I do, um, but mostly it's Falls on Barbara. So we're very happy to, uh, to have her here. Um, we have, in addition to what she, I'm sorry, did I? Okay, okay, okay. In addition to what um, she mentioned coming up, just looking a little long, well, short term, first of all, the, the Friends of the Library book sale is being hosted here this weekend. Um, we're very excited about that. Um, being back, it was very successful in the spring, and we're looking forward to it this weekend. Our Giving Garden volunteers will have a plant sale, I believe, just Friday night and Saturday. I don't think the volunteers are available on Sunday. So come by and get some nice potted plants to, or some stuff to start over the winter, for some seeds to start over the winter for uh, the spring. Um, I've been in discussions, as, along with Barbara, um, with the schools, the art show. The, the district-wide student art show pre-pandemic was in the third row, the third um, floor town hall. Past couple of years has been digital. Um, they're looking to bring it back in person. So at the, I don't remember the dates, but at the end of April, we'll be hosting the district-wide art show here at the Senior Center. Um, so it'll be here. It'll be set up in the auditorium. It'll be open to members. It'll be open to the public. And we are looking at having an intergenerational art show by having our own art league also display. Um, their work. So it should be a great 
event. Would that be event. just around the whole building or in? Um, tentatively, or? the plan is to hold it in the auditorium. It's only during two of our working days, so we can move our exercise classes just for those two days. I wouldn't want to do it for any longer than that, but we can make do for two days. We could do anything for you know for two days. So we're going to have it be almost like you're going to almost like our expo, where you're going in rows back and forth. Um, some of them out in the hallway, they have you know, all sorts of mixed media art. So it'll be like sculptures and drawings and they have a whole plan of how they're going to display them. So we're very excited about that. We are looking to do a lot with not only intergenerational programming, but also with collaborating, working with town departments. I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, working, we just had a successful, um, I, I could talk a little bit more when we actually go to my staff report part, we have to go back. Um, you know, departmental things, working with um, public safety to do some things, you know, so all in all, that's where in the programming realm, we're doing great. Great. I keep seeing um, the emails from Barbara, so I read them all cover to cover, you know, what's going on. So thank you for sending those out. Okay. Um, building update. Okay. Um, we have... The window project that started, my goodness, I think in early 2021, maybe even late 2020, has been continually kind of delayed um, through no fault of anybody else. It's supply chain issue more than anything else. Um, the I have been in contact with our town engineering and facilities department, as well as the project architect, and they're hoping that those windows will go out to bid in the next couple of weeks. My understanding, I'm sorry, Councilor Neal? Extensive presentation by them about infrastructure throughout the town, and they assured the council that indeed the windows will get replaced and that it had to do with vendors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and just to let you know, the council is aware of it if it doesn't happen. We told them so. Okay. It's double assurance that it it will eventually come to pass. I appreciate the assurance, certainly. And again, I anybody who's familiar with any kind of supply chain thing going on understands that this is um, typical. It's certainly nothing unusual. The lead time to purchase the materials themselves will likely also delay the project. But given the funding and everything else, we have to do it a certain way. What I am, what I I know that our town engineer and our town um, administrators are going to handle that part fine. I always keep my eye on everything anyway. But my concern would be when we actually start the project, I want minimal disruption to this building. So I'll be working closely with those involved to make sure that we could plan it out so that like if they have to, when they replace the windows in the, um, when they replace the windows in the cafeteria that we're not missing lunch, you know, we could, you know, we could switch things around, hold, and hold lunch in the auditorium that day. I don't want to cancel a single thing is my hopes. So that's my goal. Um, other than that, they're just keeping up the building. The heat was turned on the other day, thankfully, although now it's beautiful out. Uh, <laughs> The, we did have a drain leak up above the cafeteria entrance, um, and it unfortunately leaked into the building and caused a little bit of disruption over there, but only for a couple of days, and it's fixed. And everything else is pretty well status quo. Okay. Um, I think that's it for new business, so we'll go back up to public participation. Um, I'm sorry, oh, interrupt. No? We didn't do... What did I forget? I didn't, you know, I didn't do... I didn't do my, well, we're not going to do any purchase. I didn't do my staff report and we have old business budget update. Okay. I was just going to go back up. Oh, to I'm sorry. Top. I'm sorry. Okay. So, and I really want to know who the new member is. So I'm going back to Dave. <laughs> Public participation. Public, yes. Uh, last night, or Tuesday night, the uh, um, um, council approved uh, from the Republican Town Committee who met and, uh, and put the appointment of uh, uh, Elena Starr. She lives on Windmill Lane. Uh, she has moved to the town committee meeting, so I do not know much about her. I know that she works in the health field, and that's why she could not be here today. I don't know if you've seen contacted. So it has gone through all the processes, the town committee, the, the council approval, and um, that she should be able to come to meetings provided it works out. That's great news. I appreciate everybody's efforts in there. And if I may, Councilor Nagel, I actually have a question. I need to, sure. we have a former commissioner, recent former commissioner who moved out of state. 
and she is in the process of moving back to Newington um, and would like to be considered to rejoin the commission because we still have vacancy. She is not affiliated with either party. Uh, should she go to? You could uh, Dominic Payne, okay. or you can submit the name to me and I will refer it to okay. him and uh, send a decision to be made in the future. Okay, thank you. All good news. That is great news. Thank you. I couldn't wait any longer. <laughs> is there anything else we need to know about? You want to know about that. there are a variety of things going on in town, not directly connected to the senior center, but indirectly connected. So if you have questions, I'll answer them otherwise. Stay tuned. Okay. All right. Now we have is there anyone? On Zoom, who needs? No, there's no one on Zoom but us. Okay. okay. Made it easier for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anybody joins, it's good to have it. Yeah. Okay. Staff report. All right. Well, we touched upon a lot of um, what I was going to say already in this meeting. We already talked about the new member. I introduced Barbara. Um, we are at this date fully open um, from pre pandemic activities. It took about a total of six or seven months to get there from when we first opened our doors back in the early spring. But many of the things that have returned have returned with um, a lot of a lot of activity, a lot of participation. Um, the biggest things, as Barbara had mentioned, the gift shop reopened. Um, they did a soft opening on October 11th that we didn't advertise at all, just to make sure that everything worked and everything was fine. Um, and unfortunately, the volunteer who was going to help us couldn't make it in. So I I said, well, I don't want to cancel the soft opening. We're really excited about this. So it's, nobody knows we're open. So I'm just going to take my laptop and sit in the gift shop and work. And if anybody wanders in, well, of course, it was packed, like packed. As soon as people saw the open door, they were right in there. So I didn't get any work done, but it was really, really cool to sit in there and actually work in the gift shop and see how that operates. Um, their grand opening was on um, October 17th, so about a week and a half ago. And again, they've been very busy. So I only have sales figures through the 20th. Um, they've done in the first six days of operation, they did $930 in sales. Mm -hmm. um, there's very little overhead. Of course, we only get 25% of that because it is a consignment shop, but all of this money with almost zero overhead um, because it's you know volunteer run does go towards our programming. So in our gift shop account, um, most of this has been sitting since pre-pandemic. We have over $46,000 and that's going to continue to grow. And that helps us tremendously with the fraying costs of our programming. Um, what percentage goes back? 25% to us, 75% to the consignee. Okay. Now the, now you might think that, you know, we did $227 on our grand opening day, which may not sound like a lot, but I think our average price point is about $2 in there. So it's a lot. It was a big crowd in there. Um, that was one thing. Our trip committee reconvened a couple months ago and started planning some trips. Um, one to the casino and one to Boston to a different casino to see a show in Rhode Island and the holiday lights in Springfield. So now through December, there are like three or four, three trips planned. The first trip went off on Monday, I believe, in the pouring rain and went very well. Um, trip sales are about where we would expect them to be. Um, they're selling decently. The casino trips are a little bit of a harder sell because none of the casinos offer comps any longer to anybody. So, you know, before you used to pay maybe $25 for the bus and get a $25 either buffet or comp. So you're essentially going for free. They no longer offer that. So right now we're doing it as, hey, you don't have to drive down there. You could just hop on the bus and not worry about it. That first trip will be to Mohegan on November 7th. Um, you know, it's very going very well. Silver Sneakers returned, the exercise program, um, and it never skipped a beat. It sold out immediately. It's double-edged sword because you don't want to turn people away, but um, we do plan to just continuously run. It's an eight-week program. Just continuously run it over and over. Do you refer people to uh, Silver Sneakers? They have a class at, in Farmington at the uh, LA Fitness. We have. But for those who didn't get in. We have a list, I think, of other ones that are offered. A lot of people who want to come here want to come here. So they'll wait yeah. till the next session. We usually just refer them up the hill up to the health hill. tracks just because that's local. Yeah. And they actually have classes up there. You have to go upstairs. It's, it's just, yeah. That's why yeah, I user friendly. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no. So we that's why we 
run it continually and you know um it went to a did it go to a lottery or did we just fill it no so we we filled it and um we did we have people that are waitlisted with the promise that the next time they'll have first dibs at joining the next session instead of a lottery system my understanding is the lottery wasn't working out very well yeah. um we also because we're now closing in the auditorium could increase the capacity uh, with the number of members that are allowed in the class, we just need to buy more equipment if that's the case, because we don't have enough. We have enough for 27 people. We actually started off with an even number of 25 to begin with. Um, so I think we could easily do 30, 32 people, but we just need to buy some more weights, some more balls, some more bands, or um, things like that. <laughs> and that, that and we'd still be well spent in there for everybody to be connected. Well, maybe you can figure out an amount for the, our next meeting. Yeah, I can. I'll work on the next capital because she, you know, knows the pricing on me for the CPA and and figure that out. So, <laughs> where do you get instructors for Silver Sneaker? Well, right now, Lisa Capitone works with Health Fact because they hold the license. Um, you know, she comes down and teaches from there. We could look elsewhere for other classes, but it's just been such a good partnership wise you know, like we've asked. Yeah, I was just wondering if how we could add another you class. Ask, and you can um look for instructors in the area and you could get somebody else you could offer another you know two classes instead of two day Tuesday Thursday, maybe Monday, Wednesday, something like that with a different instructor. It's a possibility. Well I know I've had her uh as an instructor from Health Tracks, but and they probably like her, but Maybe, you know, we could get, because I know the, there's been a wait list all the time for that class. So, yeah, and we don't really offer a lot of exercise classes. I think for the number of members that we have, I'd like to see that increase. But of course, you know, it's a budget issue. So I'll talk to Jamie about that. And I think that we should have more live classes. We ought to offer a couple of video classes right now, but you know, a, a live instructor is always better. And mm -hmm. I think that's part of why she's so popular, why Silver Seekers is so popular. That and it's free. And they don't, you know, they're not paying for it. So uh, definitely something to look into. Quite a popular program. Um, our expo is the one thing that really hasn't come back, but we're constantly trying to figure out what to do with it. And I do think it's going to come back this winter. The coffee shop has been open since April. Um, we're not seeing the numbers that we saw there pre-pandemic, so we're going to really start giving some focus on that. We also owe them a grand opening because the gift shop got one, but we couldn't do one with the coffee shop back in April when it opened because it wasn't allowed due to COVID. So we're going to be coming up, spring some, storming some ideas on how to do that in the coming days and weeks. Um, the gift shop, the coffee shop revenue, as you know, prices of everything have gone through the roof, but we were committed to keeping our prices the same, if not very minimal increases when we reopened. And again, our, our average, you know, sale, average point of sale was 75 cents for coffee, you know, dollar uh, fifty for some things, very minimal, $2 and under for nearly everything. Um, so since July 1st, the, they have done $1,329 worth of sales. Most recently in September, $540. So that's it, you know, the, the it's been steadily increasing. Um, our expenses, have been $863 during that same three month period. So it is turning a profit at $466. Again, over three months, we're not talking about significant money here, but that is programming money. We're not losing money. Um, and it gives an opportunity for volunteers and it gives an opportunity for folks to come and have a cup of coffee and gather and enjoy. Um, I think there's some discussion about maybe opening up on Mondays as well. Right now it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday only. Um, as with everything else, um, volunteers, you know, have volu one of our biggest challenges I'll talk about in a moment is our, is maintaining our volunteer base. Um, we have a coffee shop volunteer on this commission. We could probably speak a little to that. And we also had, I believe the previous commission had given direction to get a POS system. So we had that shop keep, that iPad. Um, it hasn't come back yet because during the time we were away, the price of it like tripled at least. So they were asking for $179 a month for a very, very simple iPad-based POS system. And when we're doing $540 a month, that's a third of our sales. So we were able to negotiate it down to $99 per month, and I'm trying for $79. Um, so that way you will get your your gift, your shopkeep back. 
But yeah, doesn't the, the gift shop have that? The gift shop has to have it. They're a little more involved because it's that whole commission-based thing and they have SKUs and everything else. So that's a little bit different. But we, you know, so the pricing on that is I think reasonable for what we do. Um, so, but the gift, the coffee shop's doing well. Um, we're just trying to kind of brainstorm ways to bring it back to where it used to be because a lot of things are back to where they used to be, so. I mean, I don't have a problem with not making a lot of money there. I think no. it's more for the benefit of the senior right. citizens and we don't want to make money on their backs. So I don't have a problem yeah. with that. Yeah, you just kind of want to cover your thoughts right. a little right. bit. And yep. a lot of people, because I work there on Tuesdays, that, you know, they get a cup of coffee for 75 cents. They give us a dollar. Yep. And they say, keep the change, yep. which stays into the senior center. Correct. And, and it's very... Every Tuesday is a little different. This past Tuesday, it wasn't that great, but I mean, there are people that didn't have lunch. Right. And that's they're they're like about ten or twelve people that come, and they usually come and they get you know a hot dog or meatball mm -hmm. or thing you know sandwich or whatever. But they must have done their own thing this week. But I think they had an event. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, it has it has started. We can see it. It has started. Started to you know to, to pick up and whatever so and our coffee shop volunteers are excellent because they're so self-directed you know they're low maintenance um i will say that the staff had discussed there was some idea from the staff to maybe raise the prices i am against that we're not losing money we're making a very small amount but we're making money um as long as we're at least breaking even um, I think everybody thing is so expensive right now. If we can give the folks a chance to have a 75 cent cup of coffee and have that one thing that's not increased in price like everything else in the world, why not? Yeah, we, we purchase very carefully. We use it mm -hmm. Some of the costs, like, yeah. you know, we don't do BLTs. We don't, you know, do like a lunch meat, which doesn't stay very long, right. you know, and, but for the most part, you know, chicken salad is winter. Everybody loves it. I like the meatball grinder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. Or, you know, a grilled cheese sandwich, hot dogs. Um, you know, it it's it fits the it fits the bill. I mean, you know, most people are pretty, you know, a pretty good, still decent variety. So do you do muffins or anything in yeah, the morning? Yeah, they do. They buy the packaged um like uh you know, big muffins, they get it, they shop at Sam's. So they get the muffins, the English muffins or bagels or um, things of that. But like Jamie said, it's just, we've all been to the grocery store and we've all seen the prices, what it is. I mean, it's it's outrageous by the time you get this and that. And, you know, a shopping trip there is like $100, mm -hmm. you know, and what do you have to show for it? <laughs> Right. Um, yes, exactly. Thank you. A um, couple highlights since we last met. So our, our, our summer and fall highlights. Um, I believe you were all there. We had a very successful volunteer dinner in August, which was just a joy to run and to have um, to honor the volunteers who have been so helpful to us over the past couple of years and continue. Um, the next day we had a membership celebration um, that was a day long uh, um of retro 50s and 60s themed activities all, all day long, culminating with um, like a membership party that had uh, dancers and entertainment and raffles and gifts. Um, and it was, and um, root beer floats. So the actual theme of the party was happy days, but not so much happy days, the show, but it ties into the retro theme, but happy days are here again. So it was a really nice day, extremely well attended. Um, everything was good. And the staff did a phenomenal job of just flowing. You know, we have a, we have numerous activities every day, but to have all of these special activities, one right after another, we had a lot of planning, a lot of, um, you know, detail work and arranging and coordination, and it worked out very well. And I think it set the tone for a really happy, um, positive place to be here at the center. And I, that's something that we hope to continue with that momentum moving forward. Um, we had a public safety picnic a couple weeks ago that came back. It happened to be during fire prevention week, which worked out very well. It was sold out at 80 members. Um, we had members of the fire department and fire marshal's office and NEMS, the ambulance service, arrive. Unfortunately, a Newington police officer had passed away just the day or two before that, and the police department had, you know, had 
that they probably would like to remain. A plus the Bristol that happened as well the day the day before, I believe. So they had decided to step back. It wasn't a great time for them to be putting on a happy face. And I totally agree with them. But we will be working with them in the future. But the present the, the program went wonderfully. It was sold out. Um, Parks and Rec loaned us their grill. The gentleman grilled the hot dogs and hamburgers and they did presentations and it. I was very happy to have that one back. Um, we have we had numerous programs over the summer that everything was well attended. We had a pool party. We worked with Parks and Rec to have um, an ADA celebration night at one of the Thursday night concerts at the park where unfortunately it was like 120 degrees, but it was still well attended. Uh, we also did a, a program at the AARP Fit Lot at Clem Lemire, a Saturday program with AARP that was kind of their delayed grand opening. And Barbara did, and the intern we had over the summer did fitness classes there as well. Um, just so many classes, um, you know, lots of different topics and everything has gone very well. Um, so those are all in place. Um, we said we have, oh, the AARP driver's education course came back. We've had two. They've both sold out very quickly. Again, then another one that has that we're really happy to have back. Um, some challenges that we've that we've experienced in reopening um, communication. You know, again, getting the word out about what we do. We have to do it in many different ways. So you know, we're, we're doing that. We we post a lot more on Facebook now. We have our um, newsletter. We make sure that our newsletter is being distributed in all the places it used to be distributed. We need a longer timer in all the places it used to be distributed, such as all the housing in the area. Um, various healthcare facilities that used to take it for us. So it's at town hall, it's at the library. So we're making sure that the word gets out there. Um, emails, virtual newsletters, all that. Um, I touched on it a little bit before. We're looking to build our membership base by reaching out to some groups that we maybe hadn't touched upon before. And um, volunteerism, which is a case in every, every group or every organization in the country right now. Um, we rely very heavily on volunteers and we're working on kind of building back and, and reassessing what we need and getting those volunteers in place. Um, now with the gift shop, many of the volunteers returned, but not all of them. Uh, same with pretty much everything else, our bus trip group, our coffee shop, our garden. Uh, we can use volunteers really in all areas right now. Um, you have the September monthly report in front of you, which is the most recent one we have. October will come out next week. So it's got, you got the newsletter and then you got the monthly report. So it kind of details our most recent programs. Um, dial a ride continues to be extremely busy. Um, They're fully open, fully operative with no um, restrictions. I don't have my own copy with me. So um, Meals on Wheels. Thank you. I gave it out, I guess. Meals on Wheels um, continues to be, Barbara, do you want to speak about Because she took it over for me. Um, and I kind of miss it, but not really. So <laughs> you want to? Uh, give an update on Meals on Wheels? Um, it's a very fluid thing. It's, so it's, it's hard to keep up on, you know, with new people, people getting ill, you know, holding meals if someone's at an appointment, but we make it work. We were short Meals on Wheels drivers because not all the drivers return. So I've got two uh, two new drivers. I still am looking for more drivers to act as subs and fulfill one position because staff members were going out um, and taking routes three times a week. Two of those were covered by our, our dial ride drivers, which was wonderful. But now I've got uh, people taking their place, which is nice because it gives them some relief. Um, but going well, we probably have, I'm going to say, I don't know the exact number, about 60, 65 meals on meals recipients. And so the, there's four routes the drivers deliver between 11 and 13 you know, stops to people. And it, and it works well. As she mentioned, Terry takes care of part of it. She takes care of the eligibility and onboarding new recipients. And then I take over from there. And both of us can do whatever when it's, when it's needed. So I, I think that with the current um, situation, with inflation and whatnot, I think we're going to see an increase um, in the numbers of people that are requesting the work on those. Many many of the names we see on Meals on Wheels are familiar names who would pre-pandemic have come to the center and are no longer well enough to do so. So they're people we know. Um, as Terry, as I'm sorry, as Barbara mentioned, you know, they have the 13-ish or so stops each day among four routes. Um, there are some couples or members of the same household who receive more than one receive Meals on Wheels. So with that, there's approximately, give or take, because it ebbs and flows, about 60 recipients. 
And over the course of the month, we would deliver about an average of 1,100 hot meals, all delivered by volunteers, supplemented by staff. Um, some people receive them seven days a week, some five, some two. So it's an incredibly robust and program that is you know, complex and requires a lot of staff help. But I think it may be one of the, if not the most um, important program that we have. Um, I think that's about it coming up. I mentioned everything we have coming up. I talked about our numbers. I talked about our goals. Um, we are going into budget, the budget process. I believe the, the um, finance director just sent out our CIP memo, which I haven't had a chance to look at yet because it just came in the email a few minutes ago. Um, we do, of course, anticipate that our budget season will be challenging, um, just given the state of the world right now. So we will be looking at ways to um, budget efficiently, and we're always looking for other sources of funding, sponsorship, you know, partnership grants, whatever, um, so that we don't have to rely on membership, which we have not needed to rely on, and we don't have to rely on um, our town budget. So any questions? Will we be charging membership? Our membership year starts on July 1st. Oh, it's so, July. Okay. So it'll be the commission's purview okay. about whether or not we want to, uh, you want to charge I couldn't membership. remember when it started. It was decided by, like I said, by kind of like the finance director and town manager and myself to do it, looking at the numbers, just looking at the history and saying, okay, we can do this this year. But typically, because we didn't have an active commission at the time and we needed to send out our renewal letters. So typically, um, yes, it would be the commission's choice. Okay. Considered donations only. That's what we're doing now. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, except for membership, um, not members, sorry, except for fitness membership, um, which is $25 a year for residents. But we're donation only. People are, are, there are some people that don't choose to donate, and it's fine, it's voluntary, but there are some people who donate more than the $5 membership fee we would have had, would have, would have had. So it works out, I think, very well. So for a fitness center, if they want to be a member, they have to pay the twenty. Correct. Yeah, okay. we're not waiving that. But still, twenty five dollars for a year of a fitness membership is, I think, an excellent it's value. Reasonable. Yeah. And how is our equipment holding up? Well, we um, when I was hired, I, and because of the pandemic, some people were taken out of the fitness room because it was jam packed, and actually sold some of those on auction. Mm -hmm. And now it's well spaced and we've had it maintained every year. So I think it's holding up. You know, if I would suggest maybe, you know, adding one piece of equipment or updating one. But other than that, it's really holding up pretty well. When you maintain it and it gets the use that it gets, uh, it, it'll last you for a while. Um, Barbara, in her expertise, identified while we were closed for the pandemic. I just do. Uh, I don't want to delete anything. Okay. Um, she identified that there were some, um, things in the setup of our room that maybe weren't the safest in terms of exercise, um, the way the machines were positioned or the way that they were situated in the room, not just for COVID, but for general, um, general safety standards. So she did a good job. We rearranged that room. Um, we don't miss the equipment that we no longer have. I think we, we removed two treadmills. We still have a couple in there and two older two older bikes um, that were past nearing the end of the useful life anyway. And um, the the fitness room is reopened fully. You no longer need an appointment to go in. Um, so we see you all throughout the day. Would you consider donations of the fitness equipment from the public? Probably not, unless it's something very specific that we could use that we need to have a need for, because there's a lot of we don't know how it's been maintained. We don't know, you know, um, mm -hmm. but I mean, I wouldn't discourage somebody from calling us if they have something we could see. But in most cases, people try to donate things. And unfortunately, they're not something that would be usable for us, like for a commercial kind of level use. I think yeah. that's the key is you really want commercial equipment, not residential equipment, mm -hmm. because of the, the volume of people that use it. And they are built differently. So um, unless someone had bought a commercial grade piece of equipment. I wouldn't recommend, you know, looking at a donation, even though it's very kind of them and a lot of people have. Yeah. We yeah, will, there's safety issues and in, in probably insurance. Yeah. We will review all of our equipment prior to the budget request coming due, you know, to make sure that it's all up to speed. We don't need to replace anything or nothing great and new comes out that we might want to look into. Um, 
No, I've been taking notes though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see, Steph. Old business. We talked about the budget update. So, yeah. All right. And then we talked about new business and public participation. I don't think nobody joined. And no one joined. All right. So does anyone have anything else they want to discuss before we adjourn? Thank you all again for your patience in the many reschedules of this meeting. I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, we didn't want to keep missing meetings. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, a motion to adjourn. Second. So moved. It is one fifty nine. I took notes, but I could try and type them. Let me just look at this meeting.